What's good YouTube? Welcome back to LFG. Today we're going to be doing a video on Eternal and we're going to be testing out this fish tokens deck by Magikarp. I believe it was number one on the ETS last weekend. Yes it was. So let's go over the list really quickly and then we'll jump into some games. I will link the deck in the description down below on Eternal Warcry. So starting at the one spot, he's running three Alluring Ember, four Grendon Drone, four Initiative Sands, single Seek Power, okay, four Torch, four Temple Scribes, two Trail Makers, three Acolytes, Assembly Line, Rally, oh this deck's really aggressive, Marison's Disciple, this is not a card you see as often anymore, so four of those, Single Displacer, 4 Obelisk, 2 Monitors, 3 Obliterates, 4 Heart. So one thing I like about this deck is it's not running Sandstorm Titan, which every time deck seems to want to run. So I already like that. Of course, this is more of a token build. So, And then we have 2 Fire Sigils, 4 Waste Stones, which in a deck that's going for tokens, Waste Stone is the best waystone you could run the granite waystone seven time sigils because i guess we're a bit heavier on time than fire and then we're just going all dual power sources here so four crest of impulse four banner and four seats so we're going to be doing five games with this as usual i'll do them in ranked since it is an ets deck uh winning ets deck i'll do them all in ranked and uh, this deck costs just under 30,000 shift stone, so it's not that expensive. I mean, if you look at the deck, we have, what, one legendary so far. Yeah, pretty much the only legendary in the deck is Heart of the Vault. So let's jump into some games. Lemon Styles. I like that name. We're on the play. I think our hand could be faster going over the deck list, so we're gonna gonna redraw. This is not a better hand. But it's a power away from being decent. Either way, there's not much we can do about it at this point, so just gotta try to make it work. Alright, <laughs> we're going to take care of that immediately. Though I'm sure Torch is probably more of a finisher in this deck, but this guy can get out of hand really quickly. And while I, we can try to race it by going wide, if we can kill it now, why not kill it? Alright, so let's swing. We could have added six more damage to that, but at this point, I want to ramp a little bit. Hopefully this lives so we can play Obelisk next turn. That would be ideal for us. Because we know we're not drawing a power next turn. And there's a Sandstorm Titan. Yep, nothing we can do there, so we'll go Obelisk, we'll pass it back and hope for power hmm that's gonna set us back <laughs> can't even play obelisk okay pass the turn Do I want to play this into a potential harsh rule? Yeah. I would trade my entire board to get rid of those units. Besides, we're not doing anything else here until we can draw some power anyways. Okay, so he could have protect. Let's test it out. Okay. Because this build... 
scream stand together and that was a turn that stand together could not be active but protect could have been so i took the chance there and get rid of protect <clears throat> i'm gonna go obelisk here even though i have a granite and drone I'm trying to get my units to a spot where they can team block kind of profitably power is good power is definitely good we'll go drone pass it back they still don't have the best attacks when they do a space it means they probably have stand together in hand hmm just one power short of making a move here and they're at 22 so me a space and doesn't do anything If I keep not hitting power, you're going to see him start slowly attacking with a, a this or a this, something like that. Hey, power. Been looking for you for a long time. Well, let's pop this. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm guessing they have Vanquish. I could be wrong. It's just they've, it seemed like they've had cards in hand that they haven't played for a while. Alright, that doesn't do anything to our current board. Ah. Alright, so that does matter. Let's attack. I think the last card in their hand is Stand Together. And this is 8. We can um, start racing them. Yeah. So he gets to put a 1 of 1 counter on something. Now, I could try to obliterate this, but as I said, I'm pretty sure they have Stand Together in hand. Let's see if we can draw it out. I'll take that. Definitely take that. Okay. I think my next turn is a A space turn. Because this is, this is a lot of damage. It's 10 damage, which means uh, lethal next turn. I don't think they run harsh rule, but attacking for 10, then harsh ruling seems pretty good. Okay, so the one thing about that is it doesn't change the clock. That doesn't change the clock at all, which means it wasn't the best attack. So if we leave them with two blocker, I think we just win. Yeah, let's A space. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. yeah. <laughs> no one need to do the math or play rally. They're just dead. I think that last attack was a bit greedy that being said uh, it wasn't working out well for them long term either because we had more units and their units weren't that much better either so I can't really fault them on that one alright one down four to go Yeah, deck's fun. I, I used to run a deck like this before. I'm going to take a chance on the play and keep this. I used to run a deck like this before. It was uh, another build that was going around last year, I want to say. When, uh, when this stuff just came out. But I prefer the more mid-range Praxis decks. They're a lot worse most times, but I, I have more fun with those. Okay, I did draw power. I'm gonna take my chance here, shoot my shot. 
Hopefully it lives. I could have played safe, put this out, and then have a third power next turn. It probably would have been the right play, because if I go... Hmm. I'm going to bottom this. If I go assembly line here, and he goes hailstorm, I'm not going to be happy. And I'm going to err on the side of hailstorm. They're playing trailblaze. Feels more like a control deck than... Yeah, okay. I was going to say, feels more like a control deck than Skycrag aggro. Go power, attack. That's it. I know this seems really weird. How oh, I'm playing this matchup right now, and uh, I mean, someone can tell me down below if I'm playing it wrong. <laughs> but I'm not trying to make their hand better. In fact, I'm gonna pass the turn here. Can't stop that. Couldn't stop that, but if they had Lightning Strike, I'd have walked right into that. Okay, now I'll go for this. And the Hailstorm. Sign some time. Sure. <clears throat> okay, so this plus this kills Sandstorm. It's just a space. Could have played a Heart of the Vault this turn, but if I can kill their Sandstorm Titan, I'd rather just do that now. I mean, they're at 11. And there's the hailstorm. Not completely crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna put this out. If they have double hailstorm, it's their entire turn, and they need a six power as well to do that. I have another heart in hand. And there's one. Or they could just have torch, yeah. So that's second hailstorm, second torch. Let's drop them to seven. Might as well play this, grab a power. Permafrost is pretty good. Especially if a Sandstorm Titan follows it up. Um, this has charge, so let's do that. Okay. Let's make him have it. He doesn't have it. You gotta go for those sometimes. So, like I said, some people are gonna say I played that matchup wrong. But if I'd have extended into the board on turn three with all those tokens. I would have gotten Hailstorm immediately. I wouldn't have gotten that 4 damage I got in with the 2-1 before it died. He did just Hailstorm for value. But just Hailstorm in a 2-1 didn't seem like good value for him for a while there. Yeah, this is a keep. I can't turn 1 any of these. But really the hand's pretty... Okay, that makes it a bit worse. But I was going to say the hand's pretty good overall. Turn one, I'll go with a uh, seat. Just because I'll have a unit on each of the other turns. 
All right, so here's my dilemma. It's the same dilemma as last time. If this is... We'll rock with this first, though. If this is a deck that runs Hailstorm, and I played this and this this turn, they have no reason to not do it. I'm going to lead with that. If it lives, I can go Obelisk. And if it doesn't, I can, um, you know, just go with something else. Yep, that's the dream. Var's favor on that always feels good. Of course, I could have led with this, but it wouldn't have led to a turn 3 obelisk, so wouldn't have really solved anything. But right now, I'm still looking to go obelisk next turn if I get the opportunity. Okay. So I can attack for 4. Mmm, Lightning Strike. Yeah, that's what we expected last game. It's not a card you see a lot anymore. But I think it's still a decent card, especially in Felon where you can't deal with weapons very well. It's a good answer to weapons. Oh, I'm gonna lose Heart of the Vault here. That's, that's rough. I think we can win through it. But it does suck. So let's attack for 2. And we're going to play around Hailstorm. So we're going to make a 3-3. And just pass it back. <laughs> it would have been a blown out if I'd have played these last turn. Alright, so I'm going to go like this. Grab a power. Play it. And put one of those out. They've done a really good job of not taking much damage so far. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. It's two more damage I can attack for, so might as well go for it. And here I'm going to go with Marilyn's Disciple and play another unit that does not die to Hailstorm. Does die to stray though. Alright, so that's two strays, and I, I honestly doubt they play more than two strays. I'm gonna go with the frog because they know I have it, and I'm gonna go with the grenade and drone. I'm gonna hold up assembly line, but a case could be made that playing assembly line while they had their power is depleted would have been the right call so they couldn't negate it the more I think about it the more I like that line a bit better okay definitely just gonna kill that and swing for six I mean, the whole point, this is where this deck just tries to go wide, and before they know it, they're too low to block everything. So they need a board wipe right now, or Black Sky does a really good job on a board like this as well. Hmm. I'll go with this. I'll hold the drone. Just because, again, these guys can all just die to... Even, um... Lightning Storm kills them. Okay. Might be game unless he has a removal spell, which he probably does. We'll keep that on top, but we're going to go for the win here, though. He needs more than one removal spell. He needs two. One 
one more. Okay, he did have two. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put this out. I have no reason to hold it back right now. I'm all in at this point. So Stray would be really good here. But like I said, I'm banking on him not have. He's got to have Black Sky Harbinger in hand. Because this just kills him by itself if I just pass my turn back right now. Yeah, that's still game. gonna pass the turn back <laughs> can die to his own nightfall GG so he survived two strays there three lightning strikes I believe he, he cast we only survived the strain shadows because we didn't overextend onto the board early Alright, Keegs. Let's see what you've got. Yeah, I'm not going to keep this one. Much, much better hand. If we run the play, I'd, this hand would be really good. Of course, we're missing uh, Marilyn's Disciple or Obelisk to go with this, or even uh, Assembly Line, but... Still a pretty good hand in my opinion, especially if they're not running any of those early game board wipes. So let's see what our draw is, but we're going to be leading with Initiate 90% of the time here. Okay, yeah, so Initiate. Initiate lives. Let's draw a card. We're going to need to hit our third fire source soon. I'm going to go all in. Hopefully he doesn't have setback in hand. Setback is a board wipe right now. But the difference between losing this and just those isn't that big anyways. Okay. I'm going to draw again. See if we can find something. That's not it, but it is um, two turns from now we can play this if this lives. This hand never really developed the way I thought it would. So these are going to be a problem. Mm. My fear right now is that we're going to fall too far behind to catch back up. Yeah, I guess we keep that. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel good about this one right now. This is a lot, and if he has a weapon, I don't think we can catch up if he has a weapon. Jesus. Alright, I can concede now. This is lethal next turn, so I'm gonna A space, but he's not gonna block. I attacked with this because he might be tempted to block that one. But the reality is if he has plus three plus three he can still just save that. Yeah, that's a wrap. <laughs> GG. I bragged about that hand and it just never developed at all. That was a good win. Just goes to show how good that card is still unchecked. Alright, so this is the last game. I thought we were going to get a 5-0 sweep. Didn't happen.
Okay, phone. Good timing. Uh, I'm going to keep this because we're on the draw. If we're on the play, I'd be tempted not to keep this. If this was a time um, sigil, though, I would have kept it for sure, even on the play. Because we can go turn one, this, and if this was time, turn two, this. Through all those, we might be able to draw power. Ugh. Yeah. I'd rather play this turn two than play this turn one. If I had to choose. And I don't know if he's playing Big Praxis or a very similar list to this one. Okay, so let's go Scribe and pass it back. So right now, if I want to land this on four i have to play this next turn now i could go could play this and then acolyte all right we might be playing a mirror match here which case obelisk is even better let's grab that oh yeah this is a mirror match definitely block here this is not going to get better, especially in the mirror. Let's attack for one. I'm not going to play Obelisk this turn. I'm going to play Assembly Line this turn and Scout. Four, five, six. I don't need that. The reason why I played Assembly Line first is if I played Obelisk this turn and then Assembly Line next turn, the units can't attack. But if I do it this way, they can attack. And it's not exactly the same deck. Hmm. We're going to ace base. Since we have the board advantage, we're definitely going to offer the trades. And yeah, the fact that they're playing Vault, it's not the exact same deck, but this build... It's closer to the old school build that I I used to run myself. Let's just go wide. If we go wide enough, they won't be able to catch up. It's just how these matchups work. Whoever gets ahead first usually just wins if they can at least maintain. So I have a dilemma here. I can bounce this. When it comes back, it kills another unit. But I get 6 damage in. So I'm going to do that. I think he has Torch. Zero, cap, uh, zero cost Torch in hand. Okay, good. I was hoping that he'd kill that one. That means he takes 6 this turn. I'd have killed one of these. <laughs> Let's just go thump, did he thump, thump. And we're just going to go wide. He's going to kill this with heart if he plays hard again. But I think it's better for him if he plays something like assembly line here. That's good. That's good. So we can get 6 damage in. Alright. Uh, initiate died. That's relevant. Let's kill his 2-2. Two -two. Hmm. I'm going to pass the turn since we drew another obelisk. If he doesn't go off this turn, then we can uh, get a pretty good turn in. Alright, so he's at 8 power. And he has a lot of blockers. This is pretty swingy. Let's go obelisk. Just a space. He can do the math. He can double block one of these, or he can double block this. It's going to be taking, I think, at least 10 here. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's the thing. I think he can... He can kill my 10-10, but then he takes too much damage. Yeah. Alright, and then we just go assembly line and say go. Can you deal with all this next turn? Which the answer might be yes. Grendon drone, assembly line, anything like that. Yeah. Only thing we have going for ourselves is that our units are bigger. We're just gonna let him do the math again. Because we have nothing, right? We have nothing. If we say go, he draws a card every time he plays two or more units. He's just gonna slowly catch up, so. Let him make his blocks, trade stuff off. Let's kill that. Yeah, I'm I'm content with my decision. Like I said, if we said go and he's just gonna play a bunch more units, yeah. We had to we had to force him to block with everything. So that makes it 4 and 1. And that's all 5. Uh, the deck's fun. As you can see, the deck's fun. And it's very aggressive. But I think it was the second game. You can definitely play the game a lot more reserved if you need to. And it, it'll still work. You just save up for that one or two big turns. So I'm going to open this pack. And I'm going to briefly go over the four cards that got changed before I wrap the video up. Got nothing there, but it's shift stone. There was a change, right? Let's see. I thought they put the news. Thought they put the news here now. Okay, so they're not showing it, the actual cards, but Snap and Brush Stalker is now a 5 5 instead of a 5 4. Crown Watch Press Gang now costs 4 instead of 5. Feast Caller got a buff that I'm okay with, as you guys have seen, because I love Felon. I play Feast Caller a lot. It got an additional toughness, so it does now survive your own <laughs> hailstorms which is pretty good and it can block some stuff that it couldn't block before and live I think that buff is fine it's a legendary cost 5 5 for 4 for with Aegis seems good for its ability and Caleb Reborn ultimate is now 5 and it used to be 6 so I don't have an, a problem with any of these changes a snap and brush stalker you don't see being played a lot outside of draft anyways and uh, it's still not OP even as a 5 5, so I'm fine with all these changes. So that's gonna be it for the video. Don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new. And thanks for watching.